Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and today we will be checking out the official Raspberry Pi desktop for PC. So let's check it out. So I really like what the Raspberry Pi Foundation did. They actually listened to the people and created a desktop version. Now we've seen multiple desktop versions come out from the community and it all works. It's just now it's official. You know, they, they created something and they improved upon it. So that's why I really like and really enjoy using a lot of Raspberry Pi products. It's because developers keep working at it to make the community better, the device better, everything that they do make it better. Unlike some other devices that I tested where the community releases some stuff and the developers don't even care to fix their own product. All right, with that being said, let's get started. So you can head over to the Raspberry Pi website and head over to downloads and then you could select the desktop version. And then you could either download a torrent or the actual ISO image from their website. From there now, there's a couple of ways that you can install it. One, as a virtual machine on your desktop, just so you could play around with it. You could throw it onto a virtual machine server like I did on an earlier video and test out the image there. Or you could actually turn this into a live image and basically run it off your desktop or your laptop. Now. I am gonna be running it off an extremely old laptop. This laptop's actually from 2006, and I'm basically gonna revive it, you could say. Since Raspberry Desktop is built for such a lightweight machine, like the Raspberry Pi with 1.2 gigahertz and one gig of RAM, it should actually make my old laptop from 2006 run way much better. To do this, we need Etcher. You first load the image, load the USB that you wanna install this on, and then just flash. As soon as that's done, you can plug it into any laptop and it should just boot right up. Okay, so I have not touched this. I have not played around with the desktop or anything. I wanted to do this uh, live or fresh right off this video right here, just so you could get my first hand experience. All right, so now I'm booting it up on my laptop. I'm just gonna hit F12 to get into the boot menu. I can't record this. I can't do the screen capture on this part, but you get the idea. Boot from USB, select the USB drive, now there are four menus that you could go through. Run with persistence, run with uh, out persistence, graphical install or the install itself. So I'm just gonna run with persistence. It's gonna be a little bit slow because it's not installed onto the SSD that I have on this old laptop. It's gonna be running off this USB so the speeds might vary but it shouldn't be a huge issue. So what it just did, it booted into my desktop, but because my capture device is considered a second monitor, it's not mirroring my screen. So what I'm gonna do first, is mirror the screen. Now, if you guys are not familiar with this task, uh, it's called X-R-A-N-D-R, X-Rander, x, -R -A -N -D -R. x, -Rander. x -R okay, yeah. So what I'm gonna do is just hit X-R-A-N-D-R, hit enter, it's gonna give me the modes that I have available. So I wanna match the modes with the screen that I have and the screen that's gonna be my second screen so I can capture it. So I would do X-R-A-N-D-R, and output would be LVSD. You'll see it on my screen as soon as it pops up. Dash one, mode 1366 x768. Then output HDMI dash one, mode 1360x768. That's the best mode that I can find. It's off by six pixels, which is not too bad. And same as LVDS-1. Okay, so I just mirrored the screen. Uh, it should just catch up with me right now. All right, here we have it, the screen. Uh, this is the command I was just running. If you could see, it's XRNDR, you know running the same mode. So basically it's just mirroring the screen. Since Raspberry Pi doesn't have a desktop utility where it allows you to do monitor stuff, this is the, you know, command style. All right, I'm liking what I'm see here. Um, it does detect the battery. The clock is whatever the clock is supposed to be. The CPU monitor works, volume, oops, let me minimize that. I must've clicked that by accident. Volume icon works. Uh, I should be able to raise and lower the volume. And here's the most important part. It does detect my Wi-Fi and my ethernet. So that's awesome. I'm gonna click on that and it detects my Wi-Fi. So I'm just gonna hit that and uh, log right into my Wi-Fi. And works right off the bat. It also detects, nope, does not, no, actually I 
don't remember if I have a Bluetooth device on this guy. I don't think I do, but it does have the icon for it. Wi-Fi is working. And let me try to ping Google just to make sure. Yep, it works fine. All right, everything seems to be working as it should. Right off the bat, I did not have to install anything extra. As far as programming, you do get the Python, Greenfoot, Scratch. That's that huge program for kids that you could learn how to program, even for adults, but it's really intuitive. Check that program out. Scratch 2 and Scratch is there. Office, they have LibreOffice already in there. Internet, Chromium Web Browser, obviously. Um, nothing really changed. Oh, you know what I want to check out? Raspberry Pi config. <laughs> Let's see what's going on with this. Oh, okay, they removed the other menus that the Raspberry Pi has. Okay, so only enable SSH and localization, obviously, you have to do this if you want to set it back to your local time zone. Hmm, they did a pretty good job. Seems like a very fast laptop. I mean, literally, I'm running off USB and it's so responsive. I could just click on something and it'll work. Let's check out the browser and let's see if it's able to play um, videos from YouTube. So again, I am running off the USB. It's not even utilizing 100% of the CPU. Now this guy is 2006. It originally came with 1.6 gigahertz core dual, not core two dual, core dual with I think one or two gigs of RAM. I since upgraded, go on eBay. I'm telling you, go on eBay and find the chipsets for these old guys. You could pay like $20 for a CPU. So that's what I did. I ended up buying a Core 2 Dual 2.4 gigahertz and then maxed out the RAM to four gigs and then stuck in a 64 gigabyte SSD in there. And that's it, it's like almost a new laptop. Okay, as we can see, everything seems to be working. Let me go to youtube.com and it's loading. CPU usage is pretty low. Uh, I'm just gonna click on this guy. works right off the bat everything seems to be smooth okay here's one big big thing about this that you might not find on other desktops is the ability to actually control raspberry pi zeros right from the laptop okay not just meaning ssh into a raspberry pi zero i mean controlling the gpio pins from your laptop to a raspberry pi zero i know What's cool about this is we know that the Raspberry Pi Zeros or the Raspberry Pis don't have that much horsepower or RAM. So if you needed a computer, a desktop or a laptop with major computing power to figure out some calculations, then to you know send over to a GPIO and, and switch off a relay or something like that, you can now do that. You can actually have your desktop figure out all the calculations to what it needs to be done and then send over to the GPIO pins and activate the LED or something. Now this changes the game a little. What I'm gonna be doing is trying to test this theory because on paper, I read about it, it sounds awesome. I got an idea how to do it, so what I'm gonna be doing right now is gonna try that out. So you don't need an SD card in the Raspberry Pi Zero. As soon as you plug it in, you're gonna notice a screen pop up and it's gonna ask you for one, one of two options, you could say. All right, so you have the GPI expansion, but that's the selection you need to make. Hit okay. It's gonna install some stuff to get the board going right off the bat. And right now, I guess it doesn't look like it's running, but it is. All right, once that is done, since I was talking about Scratch 2 earlier, I'm gonna show you guys how intuitive and how easy it is to program stuff with it. So I'm gonna go into programming, Scratch 2. All right, here, you see how responsive this, this operating system is on even on this old laptop? Uh, the first thing you need to do is go to more blocks and add an extension. We're gonna add the Pi GPIO in there. Now you have new functions in here. For us, what I'm gonna do is the blinky, you could say lights up and LED turns it off, and I'm gonna be using the last two pins, which is pin 40, and uh, pin, I guess, 39, 38, 37, 36, or something like that, so it's ground and power. Okay, so let's go to events, and I wanna happen when I click on it, and let's go to control, and I wanted to 
for it to happen forever. And we're going to put some weight blocks in here. So it looks like it's on and off, on and off. We'll wait one second each. Now let's go to more blocks. We're going to go to set to remote and we're going to drop this one on top. GPIO pin is 21. The actual pin itself is 40. Uh, so output high, which will turn on the LED. Let's drop this over here and change that over to 21 and change that output to low. I accidentally clicked on it, so let me stop this. All right, now I'm actually just gonna hold the pins itself because I don't have any like soldered pins on here. So I'm just gonna hold it with my finger. And as you can see, it's held on and I'm gonna click start. All right, there it is. It's lighting up and it's going through a cycle. Light up, close. It's how easy it is just to program with this and for kids and everything, it's awesome. You could actually make the cat animate as you're doing stuff with the board. All in all, very awesome program. All right, back to the operating system itself. As you can see, because it's so lightweight, even on a laptop like this, I'm able to use it very well, especially if once you install it into something like an SSD, this thing just like is blazing fast. Look, I click on that. The terminal turns on right away. Uh, I could turn on internet. You know, I just showed you guys before, but it's very, very fast. And internet works right off the bat for my guy, but Again, it depends on what type of laptop you got. So I recommend you guys checking it out, at least for the live version and see what you could do. This only works with the Raspberry Pi Zero, so it doesn't work with the Raspberry Pi 3, if you guys are interested in knowing. But yes, check it out. Links are all in the description below. I'll have a link for the Raspberry Pi Zero as well. And yeah, so guys, thanks for watching this video. If you guys liked it, please hit that like button. If you guys got any questions about this, hit it up in the comments below. I do want to mention some stuff which I might go into detail in a later video, but uh, because there was this huge ad apocalypse not too long ago, a week ago, a lot of my videos are being demonetized for no apparent reason. Then I have to go in and fix it and hope they appeal it. Then, you know, giving back the monetization back. But a lot of advertisers also pulled from what happened over the weekend. Now, because of that, most YouTubers who rely on this as an income gets affected. I mean, it's going to iron out in the future, but for the time being, we are all getting affected. Now, I do have a Patreon link down below that will help this channel a little bit. If you guys could offer anything, great. It's like a little tip jar for me. But if you guys can't, please help share this video and thank you for supporting me. All right, so with that being said, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and hitting that little bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.